Stud Duke here with chapter 10 of my Dead Space 2 no damage playthrough on Zealot difficulty. Uh, when we left off we aboarded the Ishimura. We had just kind of out of a boss fight in a narrow escape with our lives. And at the end of the previous video I was saying about how for a while nothing is going to happen even though we're aboard Ishimura where the entire Dead Space series began and a whole lot of stuff went down. So this is a perfect example of something I mentioned previously, how this game builds tension by doing absolutely nothing. So this is what we're about to experience. Um, an interesting change in kind of the, uh, the sonic landscape of the game is that we now have this, this whispering that's going on in the Ishimura that Isaac, right? So, on top of all the kind of PTSD, Nicole injecting conversation into our heads, we now have this subtext with the whispering. Here, there it is right there. So now this is what we're used to. Yep, hear that, hear that. how deeply we try to bury it all about exposing our feelings man so um, but now we have this additional subtext of that whispering voice and the question of course is is that physical is that happening aboard the Ishimura or is are we still solely in the the realm of Isaac's mind of his subconscious and that whispering is an addition uh, or an, uh, a progression of his psychosis. Because essentially, what we're dealing with is someone on the verge of a psychotic break in the form of Isaac. So, we're going to be opening a lot of doors, getting in a lot of elevators, and nothing happens. And the first time I played through this, I'm like, this is nuts. Like, that right there, that shit scared the shit out of me. You know, just a plastic thing rolling on the floor. I had all these this little noises and stuff with nothing happening every door open you know like now I, I'm calm just kind of going through getting my stuff but that first playthrough that shit oh my god <laughs> that first playthrough that shit had me through the roof but again nothing's happening just the background noise just the the sound of the machinery every time we turn a corner open a door Expecting something to be there. Nothing's there. There goes that whispering again. So all of this is just tension building. Just brilliantly done. Okay, I'm going to let y'all know something's about to happen now. You know, I shouldn't have said anything. But the rule of engagement with this video is that... The expectation is that you've watched it. You, you played the game or you know what's going to happen, so... Easy kill. Easy kill. And that's why we spent all that resources, all that effort, breaking everything open, getting everything so that we could upgrade our javelin so that when we run into situations like that, it's an easy kill. So we're going to face a second one here coming up. And then we're going to run back. And the reason we're going to run back is because moving forward, they spawn behind us and we don't want them spawning behind us. We want them in front of us, and so we're going to run back to force that to happen. So pick up our stuff, turn around, because they're going to come out of the grid on the floor. So here this guy coming up. See, that's the grid they come out of. So we're going to move far enough back so that the spawns aren't that bad. We're not getting swamped on both sides. It's interesting. The farther, when you run back really, really far, there seems to be less spawn. And they're far enough away that I'm not even worried about it. Now, if you just do it normally, just keep moving forward, it, it seems like more of them spawn, but that could just be perception on my part. I love how he doesn't have two appendages as he should. I'm like trying to pick up the second one, nothing's happening. And that's it. Just that burst. 
And then we're back to the silence, and here comes a jump scare that has nothing to do with anything actually jumping out of it. It's really well done coming up here. Check it out. Listen. Right there, that shattering of the glass, like something is about to come into this area, but nothing does. That's just there to keep us on our toes. Really good stuff. Once again, I've been playing uh, Dead Space 3, so I find myself doing this commentary with Dead Space 3 on the brain and appreciating the subtleties mo even more so in this game and how they approached it because Dead Space 3 is so radically different. So we're going to be going into a different part of the map now. So we have this, this, uh, the ship being repaired. We have all this uh, stuff up with the, the red, which kind of looks like blood. But now we're going to get into this more messy, more uh, oversaturated colored zone um, that I just found disturbing. I did not like the part of the ship that's coming up now. And that was just a personal thing. But I think from a design perspective, it was well done because it unsettled me. I was like, this was the most, this is the most unsettling map for me personally. I can't tell you what specifically about it I found unsettling, but I was unsettled and I couldn't wait to get the hell out of this area. It just, maybe it is, you know what it is? I think it's violence. It just feels visually violent, which is a weird thing to say considering this entire thing is all about freaking violence, but, but, you know, maybe it's like a visual assault. So we've had the sonic assault. Um consistently going throughout the game but I feel like this is more of a visual assault and it just maybe just targeted at me you may not even notice anything particularly uh, unsettling about the color the color scheme or the saturation of all of it but it bothered the shit out of me You can begin to see it. It hasn't happened yet. We haven't fully uh, gotten into it yet, but we're going to get there. Or maybe this isn't it. Is this the No, this isn't it. It's in the next chapter. I'm getting ahead of myself. So there's th this thing cracks me up. I don't think I showed it well enough, but dude just pops out of the vent, walks across the screen, just jumps into another one like... What, oh, yeah, I do show it. Check him out. He's just like, doom, 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 doom. And I can joke about it now, but before it was like, oh, shit. You know, so when I walk into that next room, I've got the expectation that he's going to be there trying to get my ass, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so for this next fight, I always go right. Because there are two different ways it can spawn. You can have the dog thingies, that thing, or you'll have this dude on the other side. So, but I always go right, regardless of who it is, because if you go right, you have that box right there to our right as cover. So, in case you know something's on the other side, it can't just attack you because it has to go around that box. So, we're running up here to get a node. I shot him in the hip on purpose. Now, I've never not gone right and gotten a node, so I don't know what the spawn thing would look like if I just... I mean, I've never not gone left and gotten a node, so I don't know how it would look or how it would play out um, if I just ignored all this stuff and went straight ahead. Gut shot, bitch. Mm, so satisfying. So satisfying. Beautiful gut shot.
A lot of things spawning in this hallway. Very intense. Something's supposed to be trying to sneak up on us, but... We have to move up a little bit further before it spawns. And you'll see me keep turning around checking, because it's supposed to spawn. And then sometimes it doesn't. But then it does. There it is. And that's not supposed to be him. That's supposed to be another dude. So this thing has me on edge. Like right now, even though this is my no damage run where I, you know, I should have felt or should feel pretty confident about what the spawns look like. The fact that it didn't spawn in the way that I expected just has me on edge if I keep turning around looking. Which is fascinating, right? Because I've played it enough to be able to do a no damage run, yet it still has me on edge. It's not like just a walk in the park. You know, every beat I know exactly what's going to happen. I don't. And that's why I like this game so much. Because as much as I've played it, I'm still being surprised. And see, he still hasn't shown up. There he is. Finally! Took his happy ass long enough. And now I'm going to stomp him. With all the stress he put me through. Bastard. You just got punched in the face. I stomped your stump. Ooh. Alliteration. I like it. Now we have to put this power plant thing back together. I don't know why I pushed it. It was just an accident. Nothing, there's no save happening. Don't worry about it. Um, this reminds me of the first one where there's a room where you have to do a similar type of thing. So this is a pretty straightforward puzzle. I don't need any of that crap, but whatever. So we'll just put this bad boy together. And keep it moving. I love how you hear that, that in the background there. Arr, it's just always some... I'm telling you, man, this game does a, a fantastic job of tension. Because here you are, or here we are... Let's just call it we, because it's you and I. Just me and you, doing this together, trying to stay alive while everything's trying to murder us. And you hear that, right? So you're in this room all alone, trying to put this puzzle piece together. And then you hear that in the background. Doesn't that make you think like some shit's about to go down at any moment while we're distracted, we're trying to do this thing, we're about to get bum rushed? Tell me that doesn't build tension. Be honest. And it's just not that good in Dead Space 3, this kind of sonic landscape that is kind of central to, uh, to tension building and fear and terror in this game. In 3, it's more about jump scares than sort of this environment, this slow, steady build towards some uh, ultimate violent outcome. Get in there. Mm -hmm. Physics engine is crap. When you're playing this game, make sure you have some amazing uh, headphones or a home theater system that you can plug into so you get all the subtleties because it's kind of unsettling you know like it's and that's what makes it fun or at least fun for me if you're a coward which is fine being a coward is a totally legit way to be because shit be scary man um, all right get the hell out of here you know, I don't know what happens if you stay in a room. Because I've never stayed. I'm like, I'm getting the fuck out of here if I get murdered by something.
I like what's about to happen next. See, it's not really happening, but we think it is, because this is kind of a, a flashback from Dead Space 1. So, you, you heard that, right? So, you hear that growl, but how can we be sure that it was legit, given all the growling that we had to put up with while we were in uh, the centrifuge room, right? So, you see that, how they kind of set us up for what's about to happen. It's kind of like the, the, the crying wolf thing. Just kind of get our guard down. Like, listen, you've been hearing growls this whole time. There's nothing there. And this time, there was actually something there. All right, so this is one of my favorite little fights coming up here. Because we're about to get jumped in this really tight space. Not a lot of place. Not a lot of maneuverability. And um, so we just got to land our shots. So it's a nice little setup, I think. Good little fight. So I'm looking straight ahead so I have my peripherals. I can see clearly left, right. Because it doesn't always happen the same order. Like he came on the left side sometimes. It'll break through on the right. Get my loot. So seven of them spawned. So that's about four. Five. Six. Seven. I think it was eight this time. Okay, so it's eight. And then we're going to get the big boys now. So we're going to change up our guns. And I think it's three of these guys we have to deal with. So that was two. There's one more coming. Or is it four? It's three or four. There's at least one more. There he goes. Yep, there's four. Now, imagine the first time through where you didn't know how that was going to go down. Good stuff. Nice little fight. And you kind of knew it was coming. You know, I thought it was going to be the first time when it when they did it, when we walked in the first time and they did the decontamination thing. And then they did it the second time, so I, you knew at some point some shit was going to go down and be trapped in that room. Strauss is losing his grip. This motherfucker here. Oh my god. This motherfucker there, man. The first time he jumped out. Oh. I've said it before and I've said it again. This is not a game to be played when you have loose bowels. If you've got any bowel issues, don't play this game. Accidents will happen. I'm doing the Isaac dance, the Isaac shuffle, I call it. So we're going to come up on a edit here because I had originally... Uh, recorded it in two pieces because I thought it was going to be too long. But here, doing the post commentary, I decided to collapse it down into one. So you're going to see a bit of a an edit where I save from my previous capture and then just kind of jump straight into the next one. So here we go. All right, the power of editing. So we're going to finish off this chapter here by uh, going down and getting the grab thing so that Ellie can. Um, keep going forward. And we're going to have yet another example. We're going to end with yet an example of Isaac being the luckiest dude in gaming. There's so many things. And I'm not even talking about necromorphs. There's so many situations where Isaac should have died. I mean, the chance of surviving the luck that he experiences just ridiculous in this game. And see, this is why I love the job, and it's a twofer. I could kill all the worms by electrocuting the area. And we could ignore this dude, but I want him dead because he deserves to die. See, that was a tease. I made him think he stood a chance. Okay, this is one of my favorite jokes. Get ready. 
in the game. My favorite jokes. In the game. There are not a lot of them, which is what makes them so great. So here we go. Check it out. Not that. Here it comes. Not that. Here it is. <laughs> Tell me that isn't good for a game with like so few jokes. That one just just drops like a bomb. You know what I mean? Okay, this is what I hate. This oversaturation, neon color just just leaves me with a feeling of being unsettled. So it was the next chapter. It was right here. I do not like this area at all. I do not like this bluish, purplish, whatever the hell it is thing they got going on. It just it just feels unsettling. You know what it makes me think of? Black lighting. It's like this is blood, you know, and we what we're looking at here is black lighting and we, we're seeing blood splatter everywhere. But instead of, you know, being blood, which is kind of something we have an innate understanding of, seeing it in this sort of distorted fashion, I think may be the root of my discomfort. Uh, you know, which is a very effective design choice on their part, right? Got your ass, bitch. Gut shot. And you're done. Now, that might look impressive, but it's not. Because the first time, uh, I did not expect that to show up. And I got my cap healed. And actually, I didn't die. But I did get surprised um, by his sudden presence. Look at that. It, that's just yeah. unsettling. It's just unsettling. Like, like someone's dragged a body or... Something's been dragged. Oh, Nicole. Nicole, Nicole. I'm sorry you died, but... I don't think the relationship would have worked in the long run. I've never been able to kill that thing. I don't even know if it's possible. Because the ladder is designed to be blocking your way. Mm-hmm. I knew he was coming. That was not a surprise. Now you hear that punctuation on that note, like, okay, we're good. No, we're not. There's more shit coming. Now this is weird because sometimes when you bring it back, nothing spawns and other times it does. So this time we do get a spawn. Suck it. All right, so we have a little bit of fight in here. Now, these two always spawn the same way. So, one from the bottom, one from the top. So, just an FYI, if you decide to do your own no damage run. And there's no reason not to. If you haven't played this game, go ahead and play it. Like, I don't think because the game is old means it's suddenly not good. You know, I don't, I don't buy into that school. Like, you have to play a new game. Now, the spawns here are weird. Sometimes, like, four will spawn. Other times, it's just the two. I could have gone in, but... I do want to go back and get the circuit that's inside that little cave thingy. Actually, it looks more like a, um, a vault in a cave so 
I just got lucky on the spawns. There were only two spawned. Other times, you know, there'll be at least four. So you'll have the two that spawned. You'll have the uh, one of those with the gangly arms. Listen to that. That's the mind of Isaac, y'all. This is kind of Isaac's uh, imagination of the worst case scenario of what happened with Nicole. Her being turned into a nef necromorph and running around killing things. So remember, Nicole is not real anymore. She's dead, dead and gone. Everything she says is what Isaac is thinking. So, you know, one interesting consideration is her tone, her demeanor, um, are they hers or are they Isaac's interpretation of what she is? Because, you know, anybody who knows anybody, you interpret them, right? Your, your wife, your, your mom, your sisters, your brothers, whatever. Everybody you encounter in your life, you don't absorb them in sort of absolute sense. It's, it's filtered through our own experiences our expectations so this is to some extent his interpretation of Nicole and for me he's not being particularly kind to her memory because she's just fucking super annoying and maybe she was like that and I'm gonna say in real life but <laughs> then this is real He's not been particularly generous in my estimation. Unless, and of course, that's just the way she is. She was really that annoying and relentless in her attempt to get him to open up about his feelings. Your feelings, Isaac. What about your feelings? Where? <sighs> totally missed that one, but made up for it. Mm-hmm. That's what you get for peeking. Y'all know how I love fucking up these motherfuckers. Like, why y'all playing peekaboo? Like, get serious. I'm serious. I'm here to kill. And you sitting here playing peekaboo. I shot him right in the heart, y'all. That was the straight-up heart shot. Oh, another heart shot. Damn. Dude, you ain't no joke. I don't go for the limbs with those guys, and the reason I don't is that it'll the limbs will fly off and they'll still do their attack. So um, by shooting them in the heart, it guarantees that when I press the secondary attack button, I'll get the electrocution damage and I'll get the explosive damage. Versus where I shoot for the limb, and the limb goes flying off, and then I don't get the secondary effects. So we're coming near to the end of the the fighting bit. Look at this dude! Like, what's up with that? That was a shoulder shot. I was going for the heart, but I hit the shoulder. Uh, there is a crate, an ammo crate here in this area. Well, the area we just came from. Don't break it open because there are worms inside of them, so I didn't even bother. Ellie, I'm almost to the captain's nest to activate the tethers. All right. The centrifuge will explode to full power from here. Great. Let's hope this works. It'll be tight. You ready? All set. I'll wait for your signal. She seems so relaxed right there, considering she got bit by uh, what's his face, by Ross. Okay, so we're about to get into, we're heading towards the end of the video here, but we're we're about to get into another example of just how how lucky Isaac is. That's so cheesy. Where 
See? Losing his grip, man. Before, in the very first encounter with her, or when she was on the bed, well, it's not the first encounter, one of the encounters with her when he speaks to her and she's on the bed, he's... He is confident that she's not real and she's just in his head. And now he's saying he doesn't know what she is. Okay, so here we go. He's he's away. Everything's good. That shit had me worried when I was playing through. Like, what happened with Ellie? Now shit goes shit goes wrong. Right, he's just barreling through space. This crash should kill everybody else, but not Isaac. Isaac, the luckiest, luckiest dude alive. I think that's the line. You made me stick with it. That's why he feels so responsible. That's the source of his guilt because he encouraged her to do it. But let's face it. Man, I got a nice butt. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's fucked up. That was that shit pissed me off, yo. Like I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Like I was livid. All right, we're we're coming up on the end of the chapter here. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Later's.